Non, bonjour à, à chacune et à... Good day to all, uh, to all of you, uh, and it's a great pleasure to see so many of you here in uh, person for this press conference. Let me begin by talking, but just before I begin about uh, the content, I would like to begin by warmly thanking the Swedish presidency through uh, the person of its prime minister for a very methodical, active, energetic and serious presidency. We had great cooperation throughout the presidency. And I'm sure that Ulf, uh, when he makes his uh, presentation in a few minutes, will be able to say that a lot of uh, progress has uh, has been made. We know that the geopolitical context is difficult. Unity is essential. Unity in support of Ukraine. Our ability to move forward in terms of transforming our economic model, taking account of the digital uh, transformation. Uh, these are um, issues of great importance to, uh, to the member states, to the presidency, to the council and, and uh, the uh, commission. Thank you very much again to, for this excellent presidency and all the work that has been done coming out to the European Council. We had a quite a heavy agenda in terms of the substance. So I will try to focus on what I think are the key points. Firstly, the war in Ukraine. We are united and determined. Uh, that would be the first message one we wouldn't want to send out. Uh, and uh, in terms of taking stock of the situation in Ukraine, this is something which uh, we focused on. We see, a, on the one hand, a very united position on the part of the European Union in view in particular of the developments over the last weekend in uh, Russia showing the fragility and uncertainties and, and division. So a united European approach and uh, looking in particular uh, to, to uh, the need to uh, continue mobilizing finance and military capabilities uh, uh, for Ukraine. There are four particular points which I would like to touch on which we uh, focused on in our discussions on Ukraine. First of all, the frozen assets. We continue to believe that we should maintain our efforts with our partners to mobilize assets in favor of Ukraine and Ukraine's future. Secondly, we believe that justice and accountability must be a key issue. We continue to make progress among Europeans, but also with our partners on these issues. And the third point, a security guarantee. Of course, this is a key issue. And we're sending out a clear message on the part of the European Union as key stakeholders in this debate. Uh, we're just two weeks from the forthcoming NATO summit in Vilnius. Many of our uh, EU member states are also NATO members, many but not all. And the fourth point, Belarus, we are paying particular attention to this uh, issue. We uh, were uh, able uh, to have an exchange of views, uh, stressing the uh, importance of uh, following up developments in Belarus in the coming weeks and months. So that, uh, that was on the war in Ukraine. Secondly, security and defense in Versailles just over a year ago. We had the heads of state and government coming together to define the framework to uh, strengthen security and defense efforts at EU level, with including industrial strategy, production uh, capacity. And circumstances have meant that we've had to speed up our progress on these matters just a few hours after the beginning of the all-out invasion of Ukraine by Russia. It is the European Union which, uh, via the High Representative, decided to mobilize uh, 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 military support, including lethal military support. And this is a real turning point in the history of the European Union. Uh, this, no doubt, was, was the beginning of European uh, defense. So it was very, indeed, uh, important, too, to have a meeting with Jens Stoltenberg uh, of NATO, stressing the partnership between the EU and NATO, which is a key part of the uh, declaration which was confirmed a few months ago. And that applies to, in the case of the task force, which has been put in place by the European Commission and NATO on critical infrastructure, showing that we are giving real substance to uh, the need for complementarity between NATO and the EU. 
coming now to a third issue, migration. On this issue, I would just like to um, mention that since February, um, since the February Council, we have seen a lot of uh, progress in terms of working uh, at, uh, it, at, uh, the, in the most operational possible way uh, in cooperation between the Council and the rotating presidencies and uh, the Swedish presidency and the, the Commission, which has uh, made its contribution, and with uh, leading to conclusions on the external dimension of migration. And this was supported by 25 out of the 27 member states. The reason why we don't have European Council conclusions, but rather conclusions of the Council president, uh, there's a, a distinction. You will have uh, no doubt have, have seen uh, copies of this, but the reason for that is very simple. 25 member states support the conclusions as prepared. We had uh, an amendment uh, with a view to strengthening the support for countries which are uh, receiving large numbers of Ukrainian uh, refugees. There are two countries, Poland and Hungary, which believe that because of the migratory pact and the content and the decision-making process with a qualified majority that they were not prepared, were not in a position to uh, approve or validate the conclusions. That is why we decided to opt for conclusions by the President of the Council, just to say that on the external dimension of migration, there's a very strong support for a clear and determined approach. Uh, with uh, Ursula, uh, Mark Rutte and uh, Georgia uh, Meloni. They are working with Tunisia with a view to cooperating on a whole wide range of issues and initiatives. And this should enable us to reduce illegal migratory flows and enable us to uh, ensure that we can uh, tackle this uh, very difficult uh, challenge, the challenge of migration. We have seen, of course, some tragic events uh, which we regularly face, including a recent one in the Mediterranean. This means that Europe has to remain very committed on this issue, and it is something to which we have to keep coming back to and on which we have to assume our responsibilities. Another point, it was a very heavy agenda, as I said, there were a lot of important issues, uh, was relations with China. It was at the end of last year. We had a strategic debate on China, on our relationships uh, with uh, China. And it was important uh, today and, and, and in the uh, recent days to work all together in order to express a united position in China. And what's very uh, powerful, in my opinion, this is the fact that uh, uh, very quickly we agreed on the conclusions, on the text, uh, which shows that there is a clear European unity on China, a unity also uh, with our like-minded partners, because you know that together with Ursula a few um, weeks ago, we represented the European Union in the G7 meeting in Hiroshima. And uh, it's also uh, very important to show that uh, uh, we work with our uh, uh, allies and like-minded partners. Three points are very important, in my opinion, in our opinion. Point one, reciprocity. We need to rebalance the relationship, the economic relationship with uh, China, and reciprocity is a key word. We need to address our critical vulnerabilities. We need to make sure uh, that uh, we uh, uh, defend our interests when it comes to uh, the supply chains, for instance, point one. Point two, human rights, democratic values, fundamental principles. And you know that uh, we succeeded to relaunch the human dialogue with China, which is an important step, and we felt in the meeting a lot of support uh, to work forward and to address uh, those fundamental principles and uh, values. And point three, the, the global challenges, uh, uh, health, climate change, security, on all those questions, we need to engage with China, we need to have a, a dialogue with China, and, and it's very sure, and, and it's absolutely certain that because of the war launched by 
Russia against Ukraine, we need to do everything to encourage China to defend the UN Charter, to defend uh, the territorial integrity and sovereignty of um, Ukraine. And this is uh, the reasons for this political dialogue. We are all engaging with the Chinese uh, authorities. This is uh, uh, an important uh, message that we send today because there is a clear direction. We know what we want. We know exactly how we would like uh, to work, and we are all on the same page. And then finally, one last word very quickly. I, I, I'm sorry to be so, so long that time. One very last word on the uh, economic situation. Uh, this is fundamental to, to build on our fundamental strength uh, if we would like uh, to, be, to be an influential power to defend our interests, to defend our fundamental uh, values. Uh, we need to build on our strengths, uh, the internal market, the competitiveness. That's why for the member states it's important to agree on the idea to put in place a high-level uh, group and high-level committee in order to uh, identify what are the additional steps we can uh, make in the future in order to, 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 to deepen uh, the single market, to deepen uh, our economic uh, basis. And we had also the occasion uh, in relationship with uh, that uh, very important debate to discuss this concept of economic security. And you know that uh, in Hiroshima, in the G7, Again, with our like-minded partners, we had the occasion to discuss uh, this topic. This is the first time at the level of the leaders that we had the occasion, following the communication presented by the Commission, that we had the occasion to discuss that question. And we feel that there is an interest to make uh, progress uh, uh, on that uh, concept, but also to, to, to make sure that uh, we don't uh, lose some very important elements for us, uh, an open economy, that we don't lose uh, uh, also uh, all the, the principles that, that helped us in the past uh, to build a very strong economic uh, model in the interest of the European Union citizen. This is a first step, a first step today. You will read in the conclusions how the leaders have decided to, to put some principles, uh, a first step, but this is very clear. This is not the last time that uh, we discuss the situation of economic security. I stop here. Again, uh, dear Ulf, uh, thank you. Ursula, thank you for the good preparation of that uh, uh, meeting. Uh, je conclue en disant que, une fois encore, let me just conclude by saying once again that we've uh, got across a message of unity on uh, uh, central points and the European Council will have an opportunity to come back to these same issues again in the next few weeks and months. Madam President, you're next.